This month, 45 years ago, central Indiana was buried literally by one of the largest snowfalls in history. The blizzard of 78 was in full swing, 30 straight hours of snow blown around by 50 mile an hour winds into drifts some 20 feet tall. In the middle of the mayhem, we came across a mom stranded and struggling to bring a little girl into the world. That blizzard baby is now a 45 year old mom, and we want to share that and other blizzard stories from the WTHR archives. I think she was mostly worried about me. Jesse Kane survived the blizzard of 78, but doesn't remember a single thing. Her birth certificate explains why. January 27th, 1978. She's a bona fide blizzard baby. My mom didn't really say much about it at all. For almost 11 hours, Don Burba waited outside the nurse's room at the school. Members That's your dad. That's my dad. Waited too. So we showed Jesse her incredible birthday story. Oh my gosh. 40 years ago. Because Tammy was about to have a baby. And eyewitness news was there. Jesse's 19-year-old mom was in labor in the nurse's room of Decatur Junior High School. Her dad, Donald, pacing and peeking in, trying to stay cool after the blizzard interrupted their ambulance ride to the hospital. And they decided that it would be better to bring her over here, you know, and let the baby be born here as to be out halfway and then have it there. Meanwhile, in the closed but crowded Indianapolis airport. Somebody came up to me and said, we have a woman in labor. Dr. Charles Maloney said, okay. Dr. Maloney remembers jumping into a stranger's four-wheel drive Jeep. They got behind a giant airport plow. It cleared their way to a young mom in labor. For 11 hours, a doctor with no medicines or medical instruments reassured Tammy that everything would be fine. By the way, he's a plastic surgeon. Were you sure everything was gonna be fine? Uh, no, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> The doctor and everyone was relieved when another ambulance finally arrived to rush mom to the hospital. Uh, I have delivered uh, babies uh, outside the, uh, the hospital before, but never in quite this situation. But want to do it again? Uh, well, not exactly. Uh. Meet Jesse Burba. Baby Jesse Burba arrived just 15 minutes after mom and dad arrived at the hospital. Uh, I'm just, just glad it's over with and we're all alright. <laughs> it was just scary there for the last couple hours. Dr. Maloney's face lit up, seeing for the very first time the baby girl he nearly delivered. Great, great. Baby looked great. And mom was doing great, so good ending. Actually, a good beginning for Jesse. Here I am. <laughs> what are you going to do when she gets a little bit older and she says, Mommy, uh, tell me uh, how I was born? <laughs> she probably won't believe me. <laughs> It'll be a story to tell, though. This 40 year old birthday story, after all, is totally new to Jesse. She had to be scared to death. She had to be scared out of her mind. So, and probably worried about her unborn baby, I'm sure. Both of Jesse's parents have passed away. But they really loved, it looked like they really loved each other. That love and the kindness of strangers made for a blizzard birthday story that lives today in the faces of Jesse, her husband Daniel, and their four children. <laughs> 30 hours of snow, two feet of it, blown around by 50 mile an hour winds into drifts 10 feet tall. Indiana never saw anything like it and hasn't since. Was the city prepared for a snowstorm like this? Oh, heavens no. I mean, this is a once in a lifetime situation. David Frick was deputy mayor to Bill Hudnut and one of the people responsible for preventing a catastrophe. And this was the Indianapolis in its finest. The community came together to face a difficult situation. Wednesday night, the city, preparing its plows for a snowstorm, quickly realized it was much more. Are you in trouble? Are you in big trouble? I think we are. By Thursday morning, the city was paralyzed. The roads impassable, even to emergency vehicles. Well, there was high anxiety on the part of all of us, but we were so damn busy. We didn't have time to think about it. The Castleton Fire Department borrowed snowmobiles and four-wheel drive vehicles to save a family from carbon monoxide poisoning and then rescue dozens of drivers stranded on I-69. Which we uh, tried to run a uh, shuttle of about uh, 
approximately five four-wheel drive vehicles. The blizzard worsened. The mayor made a scary decision to pull police off the streets for their own safety. And so we were at the mercy of bad people if the bad people wanted to do something about it. The reality is they didn't. A club of four-wheel drive owners went to work, possibly saving lives. And they volunteered to take medications to those who needed their medications on a regular basis. Friday brought better weather. The National Guard, in the air and on the ground, was out rescuing people stranded and experiencing medical emergencies. We were assigning them on a uh, life and death priority basis. Indianapolis put private contractors to work, clearing the streets of snow and abandoned cars. DOT worked all last night. These are Bill Hudnut's scribbled notes on his recovery plan. Get the city back to normal by Monday. DOT, public safety, public transportation, hospitals were all involved, along with his plea for people to stay home and rely on a neighbor. Spreading sand on the slippery intersections. As the streets cleared, stranded travelers rushed to the airport. Families rushed to grocery stores, clearing the shelves of essentials. I saw many, many people buying six, seven, eight gallons of milk. By Sunday, Mayor Bill Hudnut was driving a city snowplow, making the media rounds and declaring a hard-fought victory. The city is open, the city is healthy, the snow emergency has been lifted, and uh, we're tunneling out from under Mother Nature. Faced with extraordinary circumstances, the extraordinary common sense of common people prevailed. Hotels were packed every key slot empty as the few workers who could get in tried to keep guests comfortable. Yeah, they're meeting friends from Chicago to Illinois, south, north. We are just here together. But stranded people don't have much more to do than sit around and eat. And that meant a lot of hustle for the limited restaurant crew. Wait staff doubled as hosts, cashiers, servers, and cooks. When we met Smithy during the height of the blizzard, she'd been on her feet for nearly two days. We have to feed the people, and I was the only one here. She did tell us the tips were pretty good. They kept feeling sorry for me. I think last night I knew it because it wasn't the good service. <laughs> At the grocery, people scrambled to get what was left on the shelves. Channel 13 did this story five days after the blizzard started, five days after the last food delivery. In fact, a delivery truck was still stuck in the parking lot. Many of the shelves were empty, especially the bread, dairy, and canned goods and paper products. But by the time our reporter Ross Becker did this story, there was some milk on the shelf. Over the weekend, it was completely empty, and there was only one place in town this store could get milk. And it was all because of the extra effort by one Indianapolis dairy. Eight workers stranded in the Maplehurst Dairy worked all night to process and package milk. They said they knew people would need it when the snow finally cleared and while out-of-town suppliers couldn't get through. And we felt it very important for us to do the job. We've had several people work 18 hours on Friday and Saturday, and come back in Sunday for another stretch of 10 to 15 hours. But the dairy crew gave much of the credit to local farmers who made it through the snow to get milk to the processing plant. While the city was digging itself out and getting back to life, I found a family living it up in Ellenberger Park. That's Kent Demery and his family. They moved into this 18-foot teepee and set up camp. They were experienced winter campers. Back then, Kent told me this was their way of escaping all the news and mayhem around them. Demery even warned the city he was coming and tried to get the handful of necessary permits. We, we talked to the gentleman at the mayor's office and uh, he suggested that before we could do this legally, we just needed all kinds of clearance. We didn't get it. The man just said, go ahead, nobody's going to hassle you. They were roughing it in the freezing cold. That's 11-year-old Brett taking a hatchet to some firewood. Forty years later, we caught up with Brett. The video brought back what he calls one of the best childhood memories. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> do you what do you remember of that? It was fun just to get out of school, go camping, there's nobody there. So it was just a good time. As much fun as it was, Brett admitted that if he tried camping out like this with his kids today, he'd probably get arrested for child abuse. 